All right, so this is Griffith's Electrodynamics, problem 4.4. What we've got here is an atom of electric polarizability, uh, which we'll call alpha. All right, so what that means is that uh, our dipole moment of this atom is linearly proportional to, no, oh, I cannot write today. <coughs> it's linearly proportional to the external electric field and the constant of proportionality is alpha. All right, so this, this atom here is situated a distance r uh, from a point charge q. I've gone ahead and written this as a, as a vector r uh, from q out to a, a being the location of the atom. <coughs> so what we're going to do is try to find the force of attraction of this atom to this uh, point charge Q. And uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and use a formula from the next page in Griffith's book, Formula 4.5. So I guess technically he hasn't talked about this yet, but um, yeah, I'm going to use that formula. Just it's a nice, uh, easy formula. So that, that formula is the force on uh, on the, uh, the dipole of dipole moment P is equal to the dipole moment dotted into uh, this uh, gradient operator and, and, and this acting on the electric field. All right, um, so one thing we need to be clear on is that uh, this electric field and the electric field that the atom is experiencing is the same electric field, which is the electric field due to this point charge Q right here. So let's go ahead and write out what E is. That's just the electric field due to a point charge, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and we have the magnitude of the charge, Q, <coughs> or I guess the, the whole charge, sine and magnitude. And then uh, on the bottom here, we have r squared, r being the distance between uh, q out to where our atom is. And of course, this is going to be in the r hat direction. All right, and uh, using spherical coordinates centered at q, uh, this is just equal to r times r hat. So r hat direction is just the direction from Q out to A. All right, so uh, now that we have this piece and this piece, we can go ahead and, and write them in. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do that over here. Um, so we have an alpha, that's a constant, and I'm gonna bring that out to the front. And then uh, we'll have all these constants in here that can come out. Um, I'm going to write that as a Q over 4 pi epsilon naught. And we're going to get those uh, constants from this E, which is inside this P, as well as this E here. Maybe I should have written this in more steps, but I think it shouldn't be too hard to, to follow along. So the powers, the, the square here, came from these constants right here. One of them is in this P and the other one's in this E. All right, from this P, uh, I, again, we had the alpha and then we had this E here. So we still have this R squared that we have to deal with. R squared. Okay, that's from this P. And then we have this R hat. So we have R hat dotted with this uh, gradient operator and then then we have this E now we've already brought this constant out here and the Q and all we have left is uh, 1 over R squared R hat we can't bring this R squared out because we can't uh, just move it to the other side of this operator here this operator is acting on this so Let's uh, go ahead and look at this. 
uh, I'm going to, let's see, we have an alpha, we have a q squared, we have a 4 pi epsilon naught, um, so I'll put this square down here, we have a 1 over r squared, okay, now let's write in our, um, the, the r component of our gradient is just the partial derivative with respect to r. So <laughs> this r dotted with that is just a d by dr. Okay, so d by dr. And then we have our 1 over r squared. And this is <laughs> all with the, the r hat direction still. Okay, so now what we need to do is just take the derivative of uh, 1 over r squared, and we know that that's a negative 2 over r to the third. Right there. Okay, so rather than write the whole thing out again, let's bring it all down here into our final form. We have a minus 2 from right here. We have an alpha. We have a q squared from right here. We have our 4 pi epsilon naught, all uh, to the power 2. And then we have our r cubed and an r squared. Uh, so we have an r to the fifth power. And this is all in the r hat direction. Now notice there's a minus sign. r hat points this way, so minus r hat will be pointing the other way. So this is indeed a force of attraction and it goes as r, uh, 1 over r to the fifth power. So it drops off very quickly. So, um, so one example of where this sort of thing takes place is if you rub a balloon on your hair and stick it to a wall, or if you put it near a stream of water, you'll see the water bend towards it. <coughs> uh, those uh, those uh, forces are basically uh, the same sort of thing. It's atoms polarizing in an external electric field uh, due to the charged balloon and then they feel a, a force of attraction and you notice it's very very weak until you get right up next to the wall or right up next to the water. Um, so going something like 1 over r to the fifth. Of course you're, you're talking about many atoms there so um, so many atoms are being attracted towards the balloon. So it's, it's more complicated, but at the root of that is an attraction uh, just like this one.